120 miles. Um, cold weather, a little bit compromised. Southern California, that won't be an issue. But we, we are hitting uh, our, our targets, certainly. In, uh, in the upper range of uh, uh, Top speed, 80 miles an hour. Uh, governed, I mean, it's 104 kilowatt motor. Uh, but understand driving EV, uh, deep, uh, full many of you had that experience. But you get the torque from zero RPM. Uh, you, you, you can spin those tires if your controls are set properly. Uh, and it's not good for fuel economy or for the, uh, the, for the range, but yes, that is possible. There's a lot of energy to the fuel of driving cars. Uh, very quiet, uh, they uh, respond well. Uh, they, they are really, uh, I believe that once people start driving these EVs, uh, the IC experience is being compromised. And uh, yeah, I believe that will be one of the motivations in the future to, to solve these EVs. Uh, the, uh, we have air conditioning. It's got <coughs> missiles, uh, MP3 plugins, and so forth. Uh, the, it's a three-year warranty standard automotive. Uh, for the battery, though, it'll be uh, at least an eight-year, 100,000-mile warranty. And from our uh, early battery testing, that will be an issue. Uh, lithium iron phosphate it is rock stable, uh, and it has a phenomenal uh, cycle life. And uh, we don't see it as being a big issue. Now, in terms of uh, getting our vehicles boat ready, uh, the battery system it is the core of the vehicle. So we designed manufactured purpose built This is uh, designed in, in North America. The uh, battery system is then combined with off the shelf proof technology. So we're not a big company, we never will be. Uh, we've heard so, uh, just over 100 people now, uh, target maybe 200 uh, to get a battery plan for us out of the way up, up, uh, way up from there. But uh, we're raising off the shelf proof technology from major suppliers. We don't want it here. Uh, and uh, other things are recognized. Uh, these electric drive components are then integrated into a, a vehicle. Uh, it's an established assembler. Uh, it, it's incredibly expensive to set up an automotive uh, manufacturing line. Our approach is to basically lease that out. And uh, so we've done that currently with the plant in China, but yeah, that could be done uh, literally anywhere in the world. Uh, the vehicle has a number of uh, uh, suppliers, as the uh, slide sort of illustrates. Uh, Li Shen is our battery partner in China. Uh, and the, uh, they just buy more of all of that wide body. If you have an iPod, you probably just build the battery for that. Uh, Miller Works is up our, our uh, high end engineering. Uh, you see it later on the back. It's a fishing, it's a decent investor. Uh, the UPM, uh, as well as our motor and their. Our commitment to lithium ion actually was pretty easy, uh, easy choice here. Uh, earlier EVs, the uh, EV1 and the uh, Ranger EV were, were based uh, mostly on lead acid, uh, nickel metal hydride. Uh, they, they have limitations in terms of their specific energy, that is the uh, energy per, per kilogram. Uh, that was an issue, trying to package enough energy in these vehicles for a reasonable range. Uh, most vehicles require about, let's say, 300 watt hours per, per mile. Uh, we, we simply could not get enough energy in those vehicles to hit the 100 mile range. Feel, well, what feeling it's a uh, many surveys and, uh, and, and experience with the, uh, those earlier programs that uh, 100 miles is probably the sweet spot, and 50 miles is clearly not enough. That's what we had in the in the Ranger EV. Uh, it was too close to the VX performance that we could really get more from people's expectations. Nick Metal Highway is better, but that was a like, $30,000 heavy back at the time. Uh, our, that's hope for the future is with lithium ion, and there are very many permutations of lithium. Uh, the one we picked actually is for the low end, but there are reasons for that. Uh, the safety is number one, absolutely number one. Uh, it's only have reliability and, and close cost. Uh, as we're talking about uh, managing expectations, I thought I'd take a little bit of a technical, slightly technical uh, regression here. Uh, that be true one. And this is a, a critical aspect to, 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 the, uh, to, to the operation of the vehicle. You know, you have cold temperature performance, hot temperature performance, and yes, uh, in order to run a vehicle in those extremes, uh, your, your vehicle must consume more energy. If it's uh, cold temperature, you have uh, aerodynamic, increased aerodynamic drag, uh, you have increased viscosity of your loop game fluids, you have uh, 
uh, heating, uh, which is very expensive in terms of energy. <coughs> at the uh, uh, high temperature extremes, I've got air conditioning and, and uh, other mitigations to improve uh, solar here uh, uh, in our case of the battery gas to maintain a certain temperature. But as it turns out, we can buy a battery plus the same temperature as we do. So uh, in some way that helps us because our thermal management systems can be integrated. Uh, it's done on a number of vehicles, including the ground floor at uh, a similar range. So, but uh, what does affect the temperature? I mean, when we're trying to design a vehicle, uh, trying to design a battery pack, uh, we need to consider everything. What, what, what can happen? What, what are our range of operation? Now, there's charging habits. Uh, how often do we charge? Do we pack thermal isolation? Uh, how do we keep it from the environment, from not absorbing too much heat or from giving off too much heat to the environment? Uh, the thermal mass, how long does the heat or cool? Uh, pack resistance, uh, thermal management system, temperature, uh, uh, solar load, uh, community to a small extent. Uh, wind conditions, uh, and climate control, driving style, wind conditions, all, all, all these that, that affect all of the range uh, and how, they, how the pack responds. Now, one of the, the biggest issues, not so much from California, but uh, in terms of implementation, is the temperature, cold temperature performance, especially. Now, here is an illustration of that. With the, if we look at a daily commute, people have just something to do with miles. A day and sometimes quite a lot. But uh, uh, if we look at this uh, uh, percentage of users, and this is taken up in the Los Angeles area, uh, look at the daily commute. Uh, if we consider for that same commute, not in Los Angeles, but somewhere else, uh, for, for cold weather conditions, without some sort of thermal management system, uh, our pack energy can be, re can be reduced from, well, we're actually a little bit north of uh, 30 kilowatt hours, but say 30 kilowatt hour, 30 kilowatt hours. Down to 18 kilowatts and minus 26. Now, when you throw in the cabin heating, a dense air, cold tires, and so forth, uh, the, the 100 miles now uh, becomes 42 miles. So instead of 300 watt hours per, per mile, now you're up to 500, 600. And uh, we, we definitely saw that on the, uh, the, the, uh, the range of uh, it, uh, it was remarkable what the difference in. We, had, we were running this, uh, this is test where we were thinking uh, of the uh, the injury bees be able to do on board. They're driving around a fixed route that uh, covered uh, suburban driving, urban driving, and, and highway driving. The same route, different drivers, we mix up the cars. We did this for about 18 months and we looked at the energy consumption. The nice thing about your bees is that you can, you can watch your energy consumption mix a lot and you can have all the data acquisition and control all the data and you process it. So there's, there's a lot of data. That but anyway, we, we saw the, the, uh, the clear rise in energy consumption from uh, cold temperature to high temperature, or cold temperature, mid-range temperature. And as I said, 300 watt hours per mile in low weather conditions, uh, they're not the five or six hundred to the winter time. So the, this sort of uh, discounting of the range is, is uh, more than natural uh, for the vehicle. However, if we then, uh, if we have a nice play uh, uh, battery pack, we have uh, 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 increased energy percentage on our vehicle. Uh, our range would definitely have a very big, big hit. And instead of uh, supplying or uh, providing transportation to 97% of the population, we're up to 70% there. We're starting to hit that edge where people may or may not uh, adopt the technology. But by adding, uh, by adding battery uh, system thermal management, uh, we, we can then Either in class, they can reduce the temperature with the battery, or the other extreme is uh, how they can be done. But we, we can then uh, extract more energy out of that battery pack. So instead of having a uh, 18 kilowatt hour pack, now we have a, a higher energy pack uh, that gets us around 42 miles up to 60 miles. At that point, now we've reached a, or past that 50, months, or a 50 mile uh, threshold that people do uh, start getting their so uh, it's a very brief touch on the one type of loss, but there are many, of course. And uh, I think what this, what our industry needs is more people to look at uh, these aspects of the uh, of the, uh, of the uh, What is our range? How many charges do we uh, uh, What are the driving dynamics? Uh, how does this fit into our 